Today I've got some vegan Thanksgiving main dishes that are so good, your family will forget they ever wanted a turkey on the table. First we'll be making a cheesy farro stuffed butternut squash. This recipe is so comforting and indulgent that nobody will be able to tell it's vegan, unless of course you tell them it's vegan, then they'll probably figure it out. The first thing you wanna do is prep the butternut squash, and I've got three medium-sized butternut squash. This is kind of the size of a medium one. It weighs two and a half pounds. For those of you who live by the metric system, everybody besides the United States, that's gonna be about one, a little bit over one kilogram per squash. To start, we're going to wash the butternut squash and then cut each in half and then bake it in the oven. If your squash is difficult to cut through, just pop it in the microwave for a few minutes to soften it up. We'll bake the butternut squash halves in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until they're fork tender, but not too soft. For a squash this big, you're gonna need about 50 minutes in the oven. If your squash is bigger, you'll need more time. If it's smaller, you'll need less time. You can bake your squash totally plain, but I like to brush it ever so lightly with a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil, as well as a little bit of kosher salt or sea salt. There is salt in the filling, of course, but if you're slicing through the squash when you're eating it and you get a piece of squash without the filling, it's gonna be a little bit bland, so that's why I like to salt the squash as well. You just need a little bit. While the squash is baking, we'll get started on our fillings, and the first part of the filling is to make the farro. If you've never had farro before, it is one of my favorite grains. It's got a chewy texture, a nutty taste, it's really good, but it's not gluten-free. So if you're gluten-free, you can easily substitute it with quinoa, bran rice, or millet. Those would be my top choices. To flavor the farro, I cook it in vegetable broth, and then I add some kosher salt along with a trio of fresh herbs that go really well with winter squash, rosemary, thyme, and sage. I tie them up with kitchen twine to make a bouquet garni so that they're easy to remove at the end of cooking. Bring the farro to a boil and then reduce the heat to maintain a simmer for 25 minutes or until it's softened but still chewy and then drain the excess water. The other main part of the filling is a cheesy garlic alfredo sauce and it tastes just as good as it sounds. In an earlier video, I showed you how to make my basic garlic alfredo sauce. We're gonna follow that formula and make it cheesy. First, we'll saute an onion in some olive oil until it's lightly browned and softened, and then we'll add some garlic and cook it until it's aromatic. Next comes some flour, which forms the roux. Once you stir the flour in for about a minute, you'll have a paste-like texture, and then you'll stream in some creamy plant-based milk and whisk constantly. I'm using light coconut milk, but you could also use unsweetened oat milk or cashew milk, which are nice and thick as well. You're gonna to continue to whisk that until the sauce thickens up. Then we'll season it with salt, pepper, and just a pinch of nutmeg. At this point, you can use the garlic alfredo sauce like this, but I wanna take it over the top because it's the holidays. So we're gonna make it cheesy, first by adding some nutritional yeast, and then some shredded vegan cheese. If you can't find vegan cheese where you live, or you don't wanna use it or don't wanna buy it, it's totally fine. This dish will be so good without it, but I like some decadence in my holiday dishes, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Once the sauce is thick and melted, blend it up using an immersion blender until it's relatively smooth. You could also transfer it to a stand blender, but I prefer to do fewer dishes, so I'm using an immersion blender. The final part of the filling is to steam or blanch some baby spinach. Since this is a rich dish, it's nice to add something green and light for a bit of balance. The squash should be done baking by now, so once it's cool enough to handle, you'll scoop out most, but not all of the flesh. Make sure you don't scoop too deep into the squash or you could bruise the flesh, and then you'll have a hole in your squash, and then your fillings will fall through. Place the scooped out flesh in a large bowl and then fold in the cooked farro. Taste it and give it a pinch of salt or pepper as needed. Now it's time to assemble our squash. Scoop a generous amount of the farro filling into each squash cavity, filling it almost to the top, and then scatter some of the baby spinach on top, and then dollop enough of the cheesy garlic alfredo sauce to completely cover the filling. You'll put these back in the oven at a lower heat for 15 to 20 minutes and then finish them under the broiler for a few minutes so the Alfredo sauce starts to bubble and gets a little browned. All right guys, I hope you're ready for some more incredible vegan comfort food because next up is one of my favorite things to make in the winter. It's a creamy lentil veggie bake. It's so hearty, it's so indulgent, but it's still really wholesome. It's made with all of my favorite ingredients mixed into one. It starts with a base of roasted vegetables. They get sweet and tender and caramelized in the oven. Then we add some lentils on top, but these are not any ordinary lentils. They are so flavorful. They're cooked in onions and garlic and thyme, and then we finish them to make them creamy with miso paste, tahini, and balsamic vinegar. 
Finally, we put a layer of cashew cream on top of everything. And cashew cream is amazing on its own, but it gets even better when you bake it in the oven. It almost forms a cheesy crust on top that is so irresistible. I know you guys are gonna love it, so let's get started. This recipe starts with roasting some vegetables. I'm using cauliflower, sweet potatoes, and carrots, but you could easily use any vegetables you like. Winter squash, rutabaga, celery root would all be good options. For most vegetables, cut them into roughly equal size so they bake evenly, but carrots are a bit harder, so you should cut them into a smaller size. Drizzle some olive oil or avocado oil onto the vegetables and toss them with a generous amount of salt and pepper. Spread out the vegetables on two large sheet pans and bake them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until they're browned and soft about 25 to 30 minutes. While the veggies are roasting, we'll make the lentils. Start by sauteing a sweet onion and cook it until it's softened and lightly browned. Then add some garlic for one to two minutes until it starts to turn golden. Pour in some vegetable broth to deglaze the pan, followed by some French green lentils, also known as puy lentils, as well as fresh thyme stalks to flavor. Allow the lentils to simmer until they're softened but still al dente. While the lentils are simmering, we'll make the final component, the cashew cream. In a high-powered blender or food processor, combine some soaked raw cashews with water, chopped garlic, nutritional yeast, freshly squeezed lemon juice, and salt. Blend for a few minutes until the cashew cream is completely smooth, creamy, and thick. When the lentils are done cooking after 25 to 30 minutes, it's time to flavor them. You'll add some tahini for creaminess, a few spoons of balsamic vinegar for a bit of sticky sweetness, and miso paste for some savoriness and saltiness. Now it's time to assemble the bake. Spread the roasted vegetables out onto the bottom of a 13 by nine inch baking dish or divide evenly between two smaller dishes. Then spoon the creamy lentil mixture on top of the roasted veggies and finally pour the cashew cream on top and use a silicon spatula to spread it out evenly across and into the edges of the pan. Bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes until the bake is warmed through. And if you want, pop it under the broiler for just a minute so that the cashew cream gets nice and browned on top. It can burn easily, so be sure to keep an eye on it if you use the broiler. Making holiday meals that everyone will enjoy can be tricky for vegans, so to help you take your cooking to the next level, I made a short playlist of more vegan holiday recipes for you to try. Hope to see you guys over there. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye.